Hello and welcome to the Unit 2 tutorial for Ed Scratch. In this video we're going to look at programming Edison to drive around, flash lights and make sound. To do this we're going to need three categories at the top left of the block palette. These are the drive, LEDs and sound categories. We're going to start with drive. So the first four blocks in the drive category are the drive four blocks. So they are forwards four, backwards four, a spin slash turn left four and a turn right four. These blocks each individually control a way of Edison moving. So we'll start with the forwards four block. The forwards four tells Edison to move forwards for as long as you want Edison to. So there is an input here which you can change to be whatever you like. And then there is an input for the actual distance units uh, for that block. So in this case, this is saying 20 centimeters, but I could get Edison to drive forwards 20 inches by simply clicking and changing the drop down here. I could also make Edison drive forwards for 20 seconds or for 200 seconds by changing the input. And then of course, at the end here, we have a change in speed. When using the seconds as I am, changing the speed will change the distance that Edison drives for. When using centimeters or inches, it changes the amount of time Edison is going to take to do that drive, because obviously a faster speed will mean that Edison will drive the distance in a shorter amount of time. Each of these four blocks have very similar input parameters, except for the spin left and spin right, which have an additional input dropdown. This additional input dropdown allows you to change exactly how Edison turns. The spins mean that Edison will turn on both motors, one forwards and one backwards, and turn on the spot. The turn forwards or turn backwards means Edison only turns on one motor and pivots around the other wheel. This means that Edison will kind of turn a little bit forwards and a little bit to the left all at the same time in the case of the turn left or a little bit to the right in the case of the turn right block. The turn forwards or turn backwards means that Edison will either put the motor on to drive forwards or put the motor on to drive backwards. So much like you can turn backwards in a car, you, Edison can also turn backwards. For the moment, we are going to skip the forwards until and backwards until blocks. Those will be covered in a future video when we discuss other input parameters. Going on further down, we see the set both motors blocks or the set motors blocks. These blocks have uh, different input parameters. And if we drag these out, you'll see that in the bug box, we get a warning saying that these blocks only turn the motors on and additional blocks are needed to control the duration of the drive. So unlike the four block, the four block will turn Edison's motors on, wait until Edison has driven the input number of distance and then stop the motors. The set motors block, just tell Edison to turn the motors on and keep the motors on. So if you want Edison to drive forwards for a whole second, for example, using the set motors block, you need an additional block to tell Edison how long to drive for. In this case, we're going to just quickly find a wait one second over in the control category in the block palette. We're going to drag that out and put it under the set both motors block. This will cause Edison to turn the motors on and then wait one second while the motors are still driving forwards at speed five. Now we need to either stop those motors or to turn or do something else with those motors. So we could either drag a stop block in underneath, which will make the motors drive forwards for one second and then stop. Or we could drop in another set motors block. And in this case, we could turn the robot or spin the robot. Once again, though, this block is just going to turn those motors on and it is not going to give Edison a duration for that time. So to do that, we would then need to go back into control, add another weight block. And then eventually when we're finished with all of our movements, a stop. The weight blocks, as with the forwards four blocks, can take a different input parameter. So we can put 200 seconds in here and 50 seconds in there, and that will all download fine to Edison. So that is the basics 
for getting Edison moving. We recommend using the four blocks for most of Edison's driving because they are the easiest way of getting Edison going. It is a single block rather than multiple blocks. Obviously with multiple blocks, you have a little bit more control, but if you're looking to just get Edison to do a simple drive, then using the four blocks is the best way to go. Now we're gonna have a look at making Edison flash lights by going up into the LEDs category at the top of the block palette. Clicking on this will give you the three purple blocks that you can see here, turn left LED and then an input parameter, turn right LED and an input parameter and send IR message. This video we're going to just talk about turn left LED and turn right LED, the send IR message we will discuss in a future video. The turn left LED and the turn right LED do what they say on the tin. So there is an input parameter here which allows you to turn the LED on or off at any point you like in the program. So at this point in time, if we leave these as on, then this is going to turn the left LED on and then turn the right LED on. But you'll notice here that there is no duration parameter here. This is so that you can turn these on and off at any point in the program while other things are happening. But it does mean that if we just want Edison to flash those LEDs, then we need to give a duration in a further block. So once again, we're going to go into control, take our wait second block and put that in underneath. Then we're going to go back to our LEDs category and take out another left and another right and turn those off. So in this case, this program is going to turn the left and the right LED on, wait for one second, and then turn those LEDs back off again. So as with the drives, these are just a simple uh, drop-down input parameter as a way of turning those LEDs on and off. Now we're gonna look at the ways to make Edison make sound. So we do this by going into the sound category at the top of the block palette, and inside the sound category, you can see a beep, and then a play a note block, a set music tempo block, and a play music in background connector block. So we're gonna start with a very simple one. The very simple one here is beep. The beep block will make Edison emit a single beep and it will wait until that beep is done before moving on to the next block in the program. Underneath that, we have the play a note block. So in here, you can click and have a look at all of the inputs and you can see the different note durations, whole, half, quarter, and eighth. These align with conventional music notation that you'll see on any uh, sheet music that you will find. And you can also find in the next drop down all of the note types, so A through G, and then back uh, around again. And there is also a middle C, a low B, and a rest in here, which is how you can add a pause in a piece of music for uh, a specific amount of music time. Then finally, we have a neutral input, a sharp, or a flat. So this is to turn any of these notes into either a sharp or flat form. All of this is uh, in line with conventional music notation. On top of this, we have the set tempo two, and then we have very slow, slow, medium, fast, and very fast. Now, as with every other program, the order of blocks is important here. So if we had a program that looked like this, and we set this to very fast, the music tempo set to very fast is only going to affect the blocks after it. So in this case, the play eighth A flat is going to be at the medium tempo because that is the default for music tempos. And then the play whole C neutral is going to be at very fast because it happens after I've changed the tempo with this block that I have in my cursor at the moment. So any blocks after here will be very fast and any blocks between start and there are going to be played at a medium tempo. So if I want all of my blocks to be played at a very fast tempo, I need to make sure that at the very least the music tempo is before those or at, in the best case at the very start of the program because that way it will make sure that my notes, all of my notes are played at the tempo that I want them to be played at. A quick note on this, the set music tempo block is only going to affect the actual play note blocks. It's not going to affect the duration of the beep. The beep is always going to be a very short, very quick single beep from Edison.
So currently each of the blocks that are down that make a sound will hold Edison in place and make that sound, wait for that sound to be finished before moving on to the next block. So we've got the beeps and the plays and these are going to do a single beep and then play a note and then play another note and then move on to the next thing. But if we want Edison to make sound and drive around all at the same time, we need to do something a little bit special. And that is this play music in background block. So to do this, we need to take this play music and background block and we're going to connect it around the outside of our two music notes. Now, Edison is going to start playing these sounds and then move on to the next block while still playing these sounds. So anything that is connected inside the play music and background block will be played in its entirety while other things are happening. Obviously, if the program ends, before all of the music in the music and background block is done, then the program will end and it will cut the music and background short. So you need to make sure however many blocks you have after this is enough to cover all of the music that you want to play. So in this case, we can play these two notes while driving around by putting a forwards and a spin under here. Now these notes are going to play while Edison is driving forwards and while spinning. Another key point with this is that this play music and background block does not accept other types of blocks. If we attempt to put a drive in here, we get a red error saying that this block doesn't belong inside the play music and background block. And we can only get rid of that red error by removing that block from the play music and background. That's because Edison is expecting musical notes inside here and doesn't know what to do if something inside there is not a musical note. This is a quick little example of a way to debug your code. So as I mentioned in the unit one video, the bug box down here will show you any syntax and some logic errors as they come through. So you can use the bug box as a very handy tool to debug your code. If your code is not downloading at all, then it is most likely that you have a red error in the bug box down here, which needs to be fixed before you can move on. So in this case, I need to take out the, uh, the blocks that I put inside the play music that were not music blocks. And then if you have a yellow error, that is probably going to cause Edison to do something you're not quite expecting, but the program will still download. So in this case, uh, as I showed in unit one, this block up the top here, the spin left is not connected to anything. So it's not going to be downloaded into Edison. But if I'm expecting Edison to play through all of this and then drive forwards and then spin left, because this spin left block is not connected, Edison is not going to do that. And the bug box down here is telling me that this block isn't actually going to be downloaded into Edison. This is a quick way of debugging your code by going through and checking the bug box and making sure that anything inside here is not red. And if it isn't red, if it's a yellow error, that you understand what the uh, yellow error is telling you and that it, it makes sense for what you want to do. Because if I don't want this spin left in my program, it is perfectly fine for me to download this program with this yellow error here, because I know that Edison isn't going to spin left. And that is the end of the unit two tutorial. In the unit three tutorial, we're going to be looking at loops and events which change the flow of a program. Thank you.